Hello and welcome to PDFsupply.com. Today we're going to be testing an analog input card. I have here an IC694 ALG223. This is a 16 channel input current. It, it reads or it reads current in milliamps. Okay. And um, it's connected to an IC695 CHS007 7 slot rack. The power supply I'm using is an IC695 PSA040. And the processor for this test is an IC695 CPU320 that I'm using. Um, and I'm connected up to COM port number two using an HE693 CBL232 cable, which uh, has a nine pin serial port on the computer and a nine pin port here. The 15 pin converter I'm using is an HE693 SNP232. Okay, so a little bit about what I've got going on so far. I have the power supply powered up. The CPU has gone through its self-diagnostic and has ended in the uh, CPU OK mode with a green light. And I have a, a green light, or rather a blinking green light, which is good to see on the IC694 ALG232. Another thing that you're going to need for this test is a 24 volt power supply. Uh, that's not an option that we do have to have that. So on terminal number one, this is the top left, I have my positive lead from my 24 volt power supply. And on terminal number 19, bottom left, is the negative 24 volt power supply lead. All right? So I'm going to power up my power supply. And what I'm looking for is that the card is able to see that we've given it the 24 volts that's required to do this test. Okay. So that light should be green in order for you guys to follow this test. If it's not, there's some sort of a problem with the card from the start. All right. And also, if you don't have some sort of a module OK light in green, same thing, that there's likely something very wrong with the, the uh, card and you may not be able to follow this test. Okay. So the next thing is the software. I'm using Prophecy Machine Edition and what I've chosen is a new blank file um, with the same features that I've showed you the IC695 CHS007 the IC695 PSA040 using slots number 0 and 1 and IC695 CPU320 using slots 2 and 3. Keep that in mind that unlike um, 9030 the, uh, the RX3i power supply is going to use two slots and the CPU is going to use two slots. All right. And then the next thing is of course we're at slot number four with our analog card. So I'm going to right click on slot four. You can double click and choose add module, analog input, and I'm going to choose the same thing IC694 ALG223. And some further configuration is needed. So if you look under the settings tab, if you're following my arrow, under parameters and the active channels, this unit, uh, as I said before, is a 16 channel. So I'm going to give it all 16 channels. You guys, if, if you're using eight channels, that's fine too, but I'd like to test the, the complete card, all the channels. Another thing that you should keep in mind is the value reference address. So where is it located in the analog input table that we can find our readings will start on percent analog input 00001 okay and I'm going to show you guys where that is in a minute input channel data okay that's the next thing that you can do I'm using at the other end of these probes is a 4 to 20 milliamp generator uh, and it's adjustable I can go up and down the values so I'm going to leave my my settings at my choice of settings as 4 to 20 milliamps if you choose, you can go 0 to 20 milliamps if you're looking for something below 4, or 4 to 20 plus milliamps. All right, so those are the, the editable values that you have. Okay, now that we have all the settings and uh, configurations and the physical configuration matching what we have in rack 0, I'm going to hit the lightning bolt icon and connect up to the processor. As you can see, I have activity here. Once I've connected up to the processor, I'm going to hit the green handprint. 
And what this does is if you look below, we are now, the status is programmer mode, stop disabled, that, that's referring to the inputs and outputs are disabled. The configuration and the logic are not equal. And again, that's because this is a new, clean, uh, brand new file with no program in it. There's no program in the processor. So it needs to be downloaded. I'm going to go to the, back to the download and start active target icon, which is this download information, and uh, run. The first thing it's going to ask us is what do we want to download of the controller? And we're going to ask it to download the first two selections, hardware configuration and motion and logic. We don't need to write anything to permanent flash memory or anything else because we're not actually using a, a, a program for this. We're going to just use some uh, input values and see that we can read them back when we get to our analog input table. There, so the, the build or the download takes a minute or so and then it's going to ask us if we want to turn on the uh, inputs and outputs which is essentially turning the processor into run mode with the outputs enabled. All right. Yes, we do want to turn them on. All right, now you can see that I'm uh, CPU okay, it's in run mode and the outputs are enabled. If for some reason you guys don't get that light on or if, or if you look on the software, and you're in programmer run enabled. If, if this is not run enabled as it should be, there'll be some information in the feedback zone that'll tell you why. Keep in mind that this switch can al also uh, stop you from getting fully into run mode with the op outputs enabled, and I'll just demonstrate that quickly. Okay, so just make sure that this selector switch is all the way to the right side. All right. Okay, now, I'm going to go to my navigator and drop down my default tables and the first selection is analog input. You could double click on that or you can right click and hit open. And for your reference, if you're looking at where my arrow is right now, you can see it says it's highlighted analog input 00001 and that's the same location as we described before when we were configuring this. So my first value is going to show up here and then of course it's going to end on 16 which is right here. All right. Now let's do a little demonstration of what you're going to see. My negative probe is going to go to the negative lead of the power supply. My positive probe is going to go to the first channel, which is cha which is uh, uh, terminal number three, all right, and I have approximately full value. Full value is 32,000, give or take, uh, depending on my uh, where I have the adjustment on my 4 to 20 milliamp output. Now I'm going to dial it down a little bit so you guys can see that I'm able to look at all the different range and resolution which is important and I'm going to tell you why because typically what we see what we see is one of the major problems that we'll see is that when the analog input card that measures milliamp fails if it dies then when we put these probes onto each channel they'll immediately go to 32,000 okay 32,737 they fail at full value apparently and I don't know why that is but I do know that that's a failed card now this one I happen to know is a good working card, so I'm going to just go down through the channels without dialing in the resolution so that you guys are able to see what it is that I'm seeing when I give this a test. This is exactly how we test it for our clients. Okay. So as I'm going through here, I also wanted to mention that this is a, an analog card that we commonly repair here at PDF Supply. Uh, we offer exchange programs new and remanufactured products and same day shipping okay so if that's something that you guys need or interests you please see us at pdfsupply.com thank you